Hey friends, welcome back to Two Bears Homestead. For those of you that are new here, my name is Paul. I'm one of the two bears and Rob is the other bear. He's actually at work right now. So I figured together we would do this video about tallow. So I hope you stick around, check us out, maybe even hit that like and subscribe button and uh, see what we're about. So as I just said, we're gonna be rendering tallow in this video. I've never done it before and I been wanting to do it. So if you recall from a previous video, I hope we, um, we had, I had talked about getting a cow or not getting a cow, but ordering a cow going in on the beef. And so with three other people, I have a quarter of a cow in the freezer. One of the things that I was, you know, my stipulation is I wanted the fat. I wanted the tallow from that because I want to render it. I want to you know, learn cooking processes with it and other uses for it. And there's a lot of uses for it. And, um, I also wanted all the bones, like, you know, the, like the neck bones and the marrow bones. I mean, I got a lot of bones because nobody wanted them. I'm like, yeah, I'll take them. Yeah, I need a bigger freezer. But at the end of the day, I got the, you know, the, the, the beef fat or the beef tallow. So for those of you that don't know what, what the tallow were, the difference between lard and tallow is, is lard comes from a pig. So you'll hear, you know, people cooking and baking with lard that comes from a, from a pig. So, and when it comes to the lard, this, this for baking in particular, the, in particularly, in particular, the, 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 the leaf lard in the pig is, it's the fat around the organs, which is the most pure fat and has like no flavor. And when it's rendered down, uh, it's great for baking. It's like some of the best baking you'll ever eat, but that's, where it comes from on the pig. So when it comes to the cow and deer and you know sheep and goats and all that stuff, the, 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 the leaf fat or the leaf tallow is the same tallow we're after. So it is the, it's the least flavored, it's um, the most pure, and that's what I got. And I wanted to make sure that I, I, I had spoken to the processor and made sure that's what I was getting because the last thing I need is my house smelling like a greasy McDonald's <laughs> rendering this tallow. So we got the tallow. Um, it was it was a, it was a decent amount. It was enough for me to start with, and I'll definitely get more in the future. So um, it's a process to do it. So I did a lot of research on it. So we're going to do it together. And you know, uh, if you have comments about what I'm doing um, or you have insights, um, please leave those comments below because you know I need that feedback for the future because I'm watching a lot of the things that you see on YouTube and you know when I Google it and all that stuff. But sometimes that hands-on uh, feedback from, from my viewers helps me, you know, get it right the next time. And um, that's it. So let's get going. Let's, let's start rendering tallow. And I'm sure it's going to be a wicked mess because I just can't imagine it not being a mess. So I'm ready. Let's go. what I think it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so here we are. This is about three hours later. And you can see that it is looking up and it's starting to really render down. So it's, it's doing its thing. So they tell me about 24 hours later um, I took a slow approach to this and I turned the heat down because it was running into like the overnight and I just wasn't staying up overnight. 
So you can see that it's rendering. And I think based on everything that I have researched and understood that we're pretty much there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start straining it and getting it ready for the purification step. Okay, so here we are. We have the rendered product. Um, I think this tallow is where it's supposed to be. I was hoping to see a little bit more um, of a breakdown. I'm not sure if this is right or not, but um, I just can't let it go any longer. I just, you know, <laughs> I've got to move on with my day. But I think it's going to be all right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to run it through a cheesecloth and a strainer into the bowl. But what I'm going to do then is take the stuff that I strain out and I'm going to go ahead and just save that in another pot. And then maybe I can just render that or see what comes out of that. I'll just do that stove top. But I think this is the first step and I'm, I'm pretty confident we're on the right, uh, right path here. So here we go. And I'll just start doing my thing and I'm set up as a lefty. So my left hand is crossed because it's kind of the only way I can get this set up. So, so here we go. Okay, so I wound up with essentially two bowls, one large bowl and one small bowl. But in the small bowl, you can see the sediment settling down to the bottom. And from my understanding, that is what we want. And then also, here is the larger bowl. And that's a little more cloudy, but I think it's just also bigger, so it's gonna take a little more time for it to settle. So in the refrigerator they go, and we will see what they turn out to look like. Okay, so this tallow has sat in the refrigerator. Um, I had to leave it all day because I had to work. So this is what I strained earlier. Now, the tallow that I had left, or that stuff that I simmered out before, I still, I went and rendered the rest of that down on the stovetop. So this is what I have of that. So this is gonna go in the refrigerator and I will be doing that as well. So I'm trying to get as much yield as I can out of it. So let's see. Now, I don't know how this is gonna come out. So <laughs> we are winging this big time. I have no idea what this is gonna be like. This could be a, this could be a mess underneath. Maybe I should have a towel handy. <laughs> there it comes. Oh, sh God. So, let's do that again. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. So, as I understand it, this is all this here are the impurities in the tallow. So, what we're supposed to do is scrape that off. And I can definitely smell the beef here. Like, this has a beefy smell. I didn't really, I didn't really get that at all while it was cooking or rendering. So this is definitely had a beef smell. Now all the impurities, the way I understand it, are, you know, are settled to the bottom of the bowl. So this here is, is salty. So it's definitely going to go through at least two more processes.
Now this stuff here, I could use, I could probably save and just use that for cooking. But that has all the impurities and it has a lot of salt in it. So I certainly don't want to put that salt into the cooking. Now this, if you wanted to just render this back into containers and just use this for cooking, this would be perfectly acceptable for cooking. I want to go through the pur purification process. I want to get as much of this out and that the beef, the beef smell, if you will, I want to get that out of there because I do also intend to try using some of this for um, making a moisturizer. Um, I've always wanted to try that and I, so I wanted to get it as pure as possible and then you know, then I want to do a moisturizer out of it. But I do want to use it for cooking as well. But I want it to be as pure as possible. Right now, this still has a little bit of a beef scent. So the trick is now is we just have to we have to render this again using the same steps as the original rendering, if you will. And that is with water and with salt again. This time I'm doing it on the stove top. This one seems to be lifting right out. We learned a lesson. <laughs> Again, here's all the impurities. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to be adding water, and in this case, four cups. And we're going to need about three or so tablespoons of salt. Maybe a little more. And we're just going to put this on the stove and we're gonna do a stove top on very low heat. This isn't enough to fire up the, you know, the turkey roaster. I probably could have done it in a crock pot, but the stove top is actually gonna be faster because this step is not a long render. Like this is already rendered. Now we're just purifying it according to everything that I read. So over to the stove we go. Okay, so here we are, it's in the pot. If you can see that it's already rendering down. I have it on like, like a medium to low heat. And I'll lower it now that it's melting, but it's, I mean, it's already doing its thing. So first purification is underway. Okay, so here we are at a nice simmer. And I believe I'm supposed to let this go for about an hour, but you can see how clear it is. And from all, from everything I can gather, this is what it's supposed to look like. Let me turn that light off. This is what, from what I can gather, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. So, um, we'll see. I do smell a little bit of that uh, beef aroma coming from this, but we'll see when I cut it when it's cold and if we have to do it a third time or not. So, we're ready to do the straining for this step of the purification. So now cheesecloth line strainer, same bowl as before, 
and literally, I could probably use a bit bigger and just kind of go right through the cheesecloth. So, in taking out this second purification step, I think you can see it in the video. Let me see if I can get that. You can see the water is much more clear. And then in the bottom of the disc is just a little bit of impurity there. So this is like, I guess pretty pure based on everything that I've been researching. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this on the cutting board. And then this other bowl here is the small bowl that was that other tallow that I had done and then I had re rendered extra. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. This is just the one step, this is the first step. So I wanna see what this looks like. And then I am not gonna do a purification on this step. So I'm not gonna do a purification on this step, so. And, wow, well there's no water in the bottom of the bowl. But this is all the impurity. So if I wanted to, I could re-render this, and then that's, you know, I can, you know, purify it more. So, but I think I'm just gonna stick with this, and I'm gonna use this right away for cooking. So I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and run this through another purification process. I'll finish that off camera because you already saw the step to this one. So I just go ahead and purify that because I want to see how white it gets. You can see the difference in the color between the two of them. You can see this one, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's coming through on camera, but this one here on the, I guess, left side of the screen, the larger one, is definitely whiter than the smaller one. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and run the purification process on the smaller one, because I'm thinking, um, I guess why not? I need to get practice doing it, so, and it's a great opportunity to learn, so, we're gonna go ahead and run this through the purification. I'm gonna chop it up and we're gonna get it into a pot with some water and some salt and get it boiling. Okay, so I've been giving it some thought as to what I'm gonna do with this uh, larger block of tallow that I purified. And I think I'm going to melt it down again to put it into form. So what I'm going to do is I have pirate uh, dishes. I have three different sizes. So I'm going to use, you know, the, the, the different size pyrex dishes. And I'm going to go ahead and make them into like rectangular molds. I think that might be the easiest way to do this. And the second reason I want to do it, do a meltdown is because the one thing I'm reading about and learning about is you do not want any moisture in the tallow because it will mold. 
So, like right now, this thing is ice cold because it was in the refrigerator. So it's you know there's condensation happening. So once it goes to room temperature, I'll, have, I'll be able to gauge it a little bit better. But I mean, this is I mean this is I mean this is hard as a rock. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna do a double boiler method. One of the methods that I learned online, I, I forget the website, I'm, I'm just not gonna to try to pull it out of my butt. But I'm gonna do the double boiler method and I've seen this on a couple of different sites. Just a pot and then I have a glass pitcher and I'll put a you know, double boiler system, but I'll put a washcloth in the bottom of it so it's not resting right on the direct heat and then slowly melt it and then any water that's in there will settle to the bottom, just like it did in the bowls. So I'll do that and then I'll pour it into the mold. I think that's gonna be the way to go for this. And then, I, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I do have the first, uh, the first purification of that small batch, have that running right now. So I'm just gonna finish that and I'll you know, do that off camera and you know, you know, you get the idea. So uh, that's it, here we go. Okay, so this is the double boiler setup. And I have it on low heat, just letting it warm up, do its thing. And right next to it is that small batch of the tallow that is just now doing the first purification and uh, boiling away. So uh, that's going to take about an hour, maybe a little less because it's not, it's not a big batch, but uh, it'll purify pretty good. And it So here is the Pyrex dishes with the tallow melted into it so it would form. I had to go ahead and pull the um, glass pitcher out of the pot. I saw a crack forming. I, my instinct was telling me that wasn't going to work, but I tried it anyway because I saw other people do it. And uh, note to self, not everybody knows what they're doing. So um, I got that out of there before the crack got any bigger and compromised the product. And I went ahead and just put it into a regular stock pot melted it down, and then you saw me pouring it here. So that's what I got. I got these three Pyrexes here, and then over here is the batch that is um, cooling for the first process of the purification. So these will cool for a couple hours on the counter, and then I'll go ahead and stick them in the refrigerator once they've cooled off a little bit. Well, there you have it. We rendered tallow together. I will tell you, I learned a lot of what to do and what not to do. Holy cow, was that a mess. Now, this process uh, was over a couple of days. Uh, I went into, we went into the Easter holiday and I just kind of stuck everything in the refrigerator and so we got to come back to it. So, whew, what a mess. Like, but I learned. I learned a lot and um, the, one of the big takeaways for me was if you can get the tallow ground by the butcher or the processor, get the tallow ground by the processor or the butcher. Holy cow. That whole blender thing was fine. I got through it, but I had beef fat like, like crumbs everywhere. So <laughs> Rob came home from work and he was like, what the heck is going on in this place? But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a skill that I learned and it's something that I have in the bank now, something I know how to do. And, um, if you have any feedback for me or any comments on how I did it um, or, or insights more than anything, please leave those comments below because uh, that's where the value of my viewers come from is, you know, helping me learn so I don't have to make a colossal mess in my kitchen again. Holy cow. So, so we move on. So I, um, the final product is I got like what I call four cakes from it. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I had the, the batch that I purified. Then I had like that, the, the batch that I kind of threw off to the side and I did again. And I'm, what I'm doing with that is I'm going to the purified batch or is the, is the batch that I'm using for the, you know, for obviously I'm using it all for cooking at some point. But I wanted to, um, and I took an extra purification step on some of 
that purified batch because um, I have really dry skin, so I want to at some point in the not too distant future make some tallow moisturizer. So there's a process for that, but that's not the point of this video. So that's what I'm going to be doing with that. And then I will store the tallow um, in, in the freezer. So I'll keep some out and the rest is just going to go in the freezer because I'm not 100% sure I got all the moisture out. I'm pretty sure I did. But if you leave the moisture in there, um, you know, at room temperature, eventually it will start to mold. So what I have is I have... This is a tallow cake. <laughs> it's like, this is basically a Pyrex dish, but it's the one that I, um, I'm gonna reserve this particular one for the, um, for that moisturizer that I hope to make. And then the other two are, let me just go over here. I have them already in Ziploc bags, ready to go. I mean, this stuff is like hard, rock hard. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's rendered out exactly how it's supposed to be. It's beautifully white. Um, it, it, it's pure. It, you know, it doesn't really, I don't smell it. I, I think it's because I work in a restaurant, I can smell or, or, or detect a, a slight beefy smell, but I, it's not strong at all. Like, um, I think with right essential oils in the moisturizer, I don't think I'd be worried about using that on my body, but I do want to show you that cake, and I had to make it a different shape or I would just get them confused is um, that cake is not as white as the other ones that I purified because I didn't take the extra purification steps with this. So let me move the camera and I'll, I'll show you the difference in them because I think uh, hopefully it'll come through on the camera. I'm not really sure if it's coming through on the camera or not. So this cake here is much whiter than this round one. So this is the one that I'm putting aside for making the, you know, the human grade moisturizer. So, but I, this one is definitely whiter. Um, this one is kind of like a dirty white. I don't really think it's coming through on the video. So that's what we're gonna be doing with this. We are going to be, I will be putting this aside and then this one I'll probably, these, the other ones, in these other ones here are gonna go in the freezer. This one here I'm gonna chop up, put in a jar, and this is what I'm gonna use for cooking in the immediate term. This one I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just, I don't know, I, may, I might just stick it in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. I'm sure it's gonna be fine if I don't stick it in the freezer. There's no moisture whatsoever. So I think we're good here. But um, I mean, it's great. <laughs> I, I'm excited, I, I'm so pleased with the way this came out. So one of the, or two of the things that I want to do with the tallow is, well, there's one of two things I should say, is I want to, you know, learn how to make that, that, that moisturizer. So my understanding is it's pretty a straightforward process, but I want to research it a little bit more. I'm going to take you along for the ride with that when I get to it. But I, I definitely want to do it. Cause I, I seem to have like this just dry hand thing going on and I can't quite seem to conquer it. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it's about, but every time I touch the dish soap, you know, and I tried all the different dish soap and, um, or anything, like I was cutting a pineapple the other day and I, my hand was on fire and I don't know why it's suddenly doing that. So should I wear a glove or have worn a glove? Yeah, but um, you know, who thinks of that when you're cutting a pineapple, boom, 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 you're done. So that's the first thing, you know, I, I, I want to do is make that moisturizer. And then the other thing is to really understand using the tallow in cooking. Now I've never used it in cooking. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a product of suburbia who has tallow on their shelf. So I um, definitely want to understand how it's going to apply to the way I cook. Um, and also I want to make fried chicken. My mother-in-law made fried chicken last week and it was amazing. And I was watching her do it. I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> like, I don't know why I never made fried chicken before. So I'll, I'll, you know, that is definitely in my future. And who knows, that could even be a bigger mess than making the tallow. <laughs> what a mess. Huge mess. Still, still there. Huge mess. So, um, but this was a good learning experience and I'm, I'm glad I went through it. I, I understand it now. I understand, you know, the processes between the wet rendering, which is what I did, and the dry rendering. I think the wet rendering is a lot more work, but I think you get a much, mu much more pure product from it. And, um, and that's important because you don't want, you, you want to get the beefy smell out of it, especially if you're cooking things that are not beef. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. 
So, uh, but there are other uses for tallow as well. Um, one that kind of sticks in my mind because I'm a little bit of a bird person and I like to feed the, you know, the, the wild birds. And especially when I lived up north, the, um, you know, you put out those suet cakes with the bird seed mixed in. That's exactly what this is. I mean, it's literally, you know, you render it down or you melt it down you mix the bird seed in with it. You shape it up and you, you can put it in a little holder out there and the, the birds absolutely love it. And it's good for them in the wintertime. It gives them the energy and the fat. So that's something I could do with this in the future as well. Now, I don't think I would do it with the, with the leaf tallow or the leaf fat because that's the good stuff. But, you know, if I had access to, you know, all the other fat in the cow, yeah, I would do something like that because, you know, why not? It, you know, it, it, they can benefit from it as well. So you can do this wherever you are. I would advise you to not learn from my mistake, but you can do this whether you're on a homestead or not. Um, if you, you know, if you can find yourself some, you know, a butcher or, you know, um, a farm that sells, you know, grass-fed, grass-finished cows, that's the best to get. This particular cow that I got is not grass-finished, but it is grass-fed, so I'm, I'm okay with that for now. But the important thing is if you can get it, get it. It's easy to do, it's easy to store, and, um, you know, and, and I mean, it's it's really that simple. I, I'm fumbling it because it's that simple, um, you know. And most people, especially here in the states, have some proximity to somebody that's raising the grass-fed and grass-finished uh, beef, if you will. So that's pretty much it. I really thank you for following along on this one. A little bit long of a video today, but uh, it was because I just keep stopping and cleaning. But at the end of the day, um, I learned a lot. I hope you did too. I thank you for your time. I thank you for being here. Please, please, please tell a friend about us. Share these videos. Um, you know, that's the best way you can help us grow. And also, hit that like and subscribe button. And one more thing, if you have any insights for uses for the tallow, other than what I mentioned in this video, please leave those comments below. Let me know what you think about, uh, you know, some of the things you can do with it. And uh, we'll just take it from there. Again, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.